So as you can see, the uh, weather has really, really taken a dive for the worst and I haven't got pollen sub on all my hives yet. I'm a bit like chomping at the bit, but there is still a month left and we've got time to get all pollen sub on, but I'll explain it. it uh, my thinking is it's not perhaps necessary, but it is. Um, I've mixed it all up. I've got a load ready. I've got four tubs like that full, two in the truck, but two here ready to go on. And I'm giving them like, you know, half a patty each just to give them that bit of extra feed in the autumn. I don't want to give it later in October. I want to give it over the next week to two weeks maximum. And that gives them time to break it down. I don't want them to start brooding because of it. I just want them to make sure they've got plenty of stored pollen and stored protein. And I've brought up the level of protein in that colony so that come next spring, whenever that may be, when those winter bees are coming near the end of their life and they're starting to work really hard to bring on the spring bees, they've got some energy to pass on and some proteins to pass on to the uh, new bees that are being born. And we know now that how important that is to get that boost and that energy into the colony first week of the real flight you get in spring. And that's when you get really good build up really quickly. Uh, I'm convinced of it. So uh, today we are starting the big clean up. Got all the extractors to clean. We've uh, taken, all, taken all the pump off. That's all been done. We've just got to take out the sump we use and then we've got to start cleaning all the extractors. It doesn't take long. It's just something to, to get finished and done. Uh, it's another process that has to be done. It's nice to do it, to be honest, while the weather's like it is because it's so difficult to get anything done, obviously outside now, because with this rain as it is, um, you really are kind of fighting it, you know? So it's gonna be, the next few days are gonna be like that. Next week, I'm, com I'm busy all week, uh, finishing off some client work, uh, at least next week. And I'm just hoping for some dry weather. So really, there's not a lot going on right now. All I'm trying to do is get into my hives. The feeding is finished uh, completely. Um, I've still got a little thymol, a bit of thymol mixed up, um, but uh, I've literally used my last IBC. That one is now completely empty. If you ever want proof, we're in France. Look, the genuine 2CV van. That's my colleagues. Absolutely amazing piece of kit. They go anywhere in any land, in any soil that's sodden, you can drive in and drive out. I thought he was mad when he bought that, but it's actually an amazing little van. This goes absolutely anywhere. I could not believe it myself. We've got uh, just this other side of this fence, we've got an apiary here. And uh, in the winter, it's like quite a slope. With our two old trucks, my truck and my colleague's old truck he had, you couldn't get in it um, after we've had rain like this. Not, not at all, that's it for the winter. Because you just get stuck with this, you drive in, and you drive out. Amazing little vans. They're actually pretty sought after now. They just go anywhere. Um, <laughs> it doesn't look much, but you can actually get a lot of kit in the back, you know? So, uh, really good piece of kit. But anyway, that's what we're doing. We're tidying up, we're cleaning up, and uh, just getting on with things while we can. Um, there's a lot to do. I've got a, a list gonna be made on the notice board shortly of uh, things we have to get done for the winter and it's absolutely vast, you know, absolutely immense. So, um, you know, it's got to get on with it. And hopefully we'll get some more syrup. Got quite a few of these kicking around now that are empty. Hopefully we're going to get some more syrup this year, earlier this year in February, March time, so that we can be prepared. Because I've only got one of those containers left and that's only 900 litres of syrup. It might sound a lot, but it doesn't go very far when you're trying to feed a heck of a lot of uh, hives. But usually for me, um, uh, that amount of syrup is more than enough in the spring. In the spring, all I'm doing is, is giving a sort of slight stimulation feed, but also helping uh, getting, them, getting them through a period where you've got strong nukes that will need just bailing out if they haven't got enough stores. So that's why I'm still, I say all the time, whatever you can get in now, keep trying to get it in because you don't regret it in the spring when they're all okay and they're, they're ticking it along while there's not much nectar coming in yet they're growing and they're just quaffing nectar like and quaffing stores in the hive when there's nothing else coming through the door. You might see pollen coming in, but there's actually no real nectar coming in. Sometimes we don't get it till middle of April. 
This year we had it in the middle of March, so it just depends on how warm it is and what's coming into flower. Well, this is absolutely amazing and not expected. We've just had two days of rain and gales and uh, we're right in the middle of this low, this big depression we've got, which is the kind of the first winter storm. And yet, we've, you can just see the cloud line there. We're just the other side of it and we've got calm and all the bees are out pooping and flying and bringing in pollen, it's just unreal. This is often what you get in Britain and you get um, days and days and days of rain and then when you do get it nice, it can be exceptionally nice. You see the wind has blown everything over, come down to kind of sort out all these nukes here. They're just being sorted and going uh, back in the shed to be cleaned and all uh, fixed. But it's just this time of year where you've got all the bits and pieces hanging around from nukes that died, stuff to be cleaned up, um, hives that's blown over in the wind. But it doesn't matter because there's nothing in them. There's nothing lost. They're just stacked up there. You know, it just that's kind of exactly as it is in the real world when you're trying to run loads of hives. Um, in terms of hygiene, I'm really careful that all my frames, anything that's infected, gets cleaned or burned or will melt it down quickly. So I don't leave anything lying around. But obviously you do get empty boxes and you do get things like that. But uh, the bees are all foraging. It's absolutely amazing. You see the passage of bees there. It's absolutely brilliant. It just shows you how dynamic they are. You literally get a little window. They've, they've had about an hour and a half. When I first came down just before, it was unbelievable. It was just to see a bees. And the reason why they're desperate to gather is not as much as they want to gather pollen. It's the fact that they're all still processing food and they all want to, they all want to poop and get rid of all the dirt in the hive and clean out. And when there's still big colonies, they need to fly regularly. And that's why it's really good if the, if the flying and the amount of bees decreases slowly, not just suddenly they can't fly one day and that's it for weeks because you end up with the bees just don't cleanse themselves. And you end up with a real problem. You're really a sitting target for dysentery problems, you know, during the winter. But, I mean, mostly our bees in Brittany here do get a flight at least once or twice a month during the winter season, you know? So, uh, you know, everywhere I look, there's still loads of work to do, all this to sort out, got loads of hives here. This is funny that all our uh, squash now, this is the bonus that we sowed. There they are. Absolutely loads, they're all dying down now. Got loads of squash for the winter. Absolutely full of it. I can't even get in this polytunnel here. Absolutely lovely. So they're all dying down now, and this is all becoming ready for, it's all gonna be dug over the winter, winter digging and rotivating. And I'm gonna dig all that in and start uh, cultivating that for vegetables next year. But it just gives you that kind of hope, you know, when you can, you get this little window in the weather. I've got a lot of colonies here that are just in the process of being sorted out. Some that have died out, that I'm, they've just got to move the boxes and tidy up. Uh, obviously they all look good. They're all tidy. I've just cut trimmed around here the other day, but it's just to get down here and get all, get this all finished, get it all done. And with weather like this, it just gives you that bit of encouragement, you know, that everything is good. So, um, just loads to do, loads and loads to do. Up at the works this morning, it's a different world. You're in there. It's like, feels cold, chilly. You light the fire. And now look at it. It's, it's just unreal. This is unreal. So let's hope we get a few gaps in the weather like this and uh, we'll see what happens. But we've had about, yeah, 46 mil of rain in the last two days. So it's a lot, that's a heck of a lot of rain. Other places have had even more and we actually had a little bit less than I thought we were gonna get. But um, anyway, let's go and get on with some stuff here. I'm, what I'm doing first is getting rid of any old frames that haven't been melted down yet out of these boxes. They'll go to the workshop for melting down tomorrow morning. And then I can then start putting these away knowing that they're all done and sorted out because it's important you keep on top of that, you know? And also we're going to exchange our wax in soon. So I want to make sure that everything I can melt down has been melted down so I can get the best exchange. Because obviously I need a lot of frames for next year and I need a lot of wax for next year. So I've got to work all that out. But anyway, what a glorious sight. All these are flying really well. So uh, it's good. That's like a big relief. So while I'm digging out all these frames to be melted down, some of them are bad. Some of them aren't quite so bad. I could almost keep that one, you know, but it's just, you know, it's quite dark. It's got a bit of pollen in it, you know, a bit of a few dead bees. I'm just not happy with that. I'd rather just get rid of it now than have the wax moth chew over it over the winter. This is old as well, I know, because there's a lot of drone in there, but also this is wired horizontally, for example, that way, the wires, and we all prefer them now vertically. So this one here, the wires go this way. But 
What I'm going to show you is just quickly show you our nukes. These are our Dadont six frame poly nukes. Obviously, I use a piece of uh, cut up inner tube for a tire just to hold the roof on. You don't need it, you could make something else. Um, you know, so we have a cover, we use plastic on the top, and when we put the plastic on, it actually helps the roof grip, the roof grip down. And that then all grips over. So this is what you get when you get a nuke that fails. It's just to show you so you can kind of scrape all this shit off the top. And I like to do this before it goes into the wax melter. So then the frames at least aren't sticky. So then what you can do is you kind of, this is, this is why this hook is so good. And incidentally, this is a, uh, a hooked hive tool. It's really handy because you can just get this in here like that and just kind of lift up. And you can lift out all the frames. And the problem is this height, this nuke, hasn't been reinforced with metal castellations. The, the poly ones here, you can see it gets a bit tatty. Even though this frame, for example, it's clean. There's a lot of drone brood and that would have been for honey as well. You know, it's just a bit of piggledy piggledy. I'm not that overly happy with it. So that's going to be melted down. I'm, I'm quite ruthless, really. I'd rather melt down stuff I don't need. Look at the dark that frame is. The actual frame itself isn't bad, um, but it's very, very dark black. So I'm melting that down, and that'll go for the melt. I just don't hang around, you know, you just gotta move on. And uh, this one the same, it's pretty dark. It's absolutely clean though, but a wax moth from the previous frame, but tiny bit there, you know, but, oh, there's pollen in this one. That's a good reason to melt this one down. So, yeah, I've got three there that have been melted down. This one, you know, is clean inside there. We've had a few issues with the bottom gauze coming off. So all we do is we take it off completely and re-glue it down. And we'll save up and do say 20 at once. But you see what happens as well is these castellations actually, well, these spaces, I suppose you'd say, they do actually end up getting broken off. These haven't got broken off yet, but this is why we put metal ones in instead. I'll find one with metal in and you'll sh I'll show you. This is a loop that has been done. You can see we put these in instead. So that reinforces the poly uh, polystyrene spaces, but it means that they be these become much more indestructible and even less chance of wrecking them. But that is a Daydon six frame poly nuke. We put these handles on as well that screw through here. I've shown you in one of my videos before, but you can see the screws maybe going through there. It's difficult to see. You can just see them at the entrance way there. But the screws go through from this side. There's the screws and they go through and hold the handle on. So you end up with a handle on it. But on this one here, I haven't done anything with that. And you can see the, you know, the cast, the, these spaces tend to break off a bit. But it's still a nuke, it still works fine. You know, they're cheap. These work out about 25 euros each. And we can get them in bulk and buy them for slightly cheaper as well. When you buy 100, but obviously you've got to buy 100. So you've got a doorway on the front that is, is closable, but we tend to leave that, that's, as, that's too big for as far as I'm concerned. I like to actually reduce that down to just about 5.56 mil, because that helps against hornets in the summer. But also in, in the summer, we blank these off to literally, uh, to leave just a gap like that. Two, two or three centimeters in length is fine. That's all they need. As soon as you get that summer dearth starting, they don't need much access and it helps against, uh, it helps all the whole apiary, because if no one can rob anyone else, the robbing stops and there's no frenzied, frenzied attempt to, to basically take over other colonies and, and rob them out. So um, that is our Daydont five frame nuke and it's made by Stair. We bought we buy these from our usual beekeeper supply, so it's Stair in Germany. Okay, and they are patented, I think. So yeah, there you go, Daydont, but they are Daydont six framed. And we often put partitions in. Here's our partition we put in. That's what we do. I've shown you these before. They are just a frame, same size as that, but with a slab of polystyrene in the middle. And sometimes you have to paint them, otherwise the bees will chew them. But this one hasn't, you can see, they tiny, tiny bit there, but overall they start to propolize it up, which is what we like. Because once they've propolized it, it means they're not gonna chew it. And then you can use it time and time again. You can dunk it in, in uh, caustic soda if you want to give it a clean and uh, it, it really just uh, keeps them all on top of things. We bleach them, we, we basically scrape, when we clean them every year, you see me do it, we scrape them out, scrape all this loose propolis off, and then just give them a bleach. 
or you can use soda crystals, whatever you want to do. The bleach does seem to dissolve a bit of the propolis. You have to be careful if you pressure wash them too hard because they will get, um, they will they will break up with the pressure wash and you've got to be careful, you know, you, you, can, you can see the damage. But uh, overall, they're a really good nuke. They are better than having to make wooden ones. So as you can see, the rain has returned. We're back into the rain zone. That brief two hours was absolutely fantastic. But now we are heading for loads more rain. If I knew it was gonna be good in a week and be lovely and sunny and warm, I'd be so grateful for this rain because it's gonna be a long winter otherwise. But whatever you're doing, I'll catch you again next week. Bye for now.